We all know people suffer from allergies, but what about man's best friend? They go everywhere with us and are exposed to the same allergens, so do our pets get the sniffles every spring, just like so many of us. And here with more is our resident vet, Dr. Marty Becker, and Louie, this beautiful golden retriever who is enormous. <laughs> Hello, it's so great to have both of you here on the show. I think this is half kid's pony, yeah. half golden retriever. <laughs> he's gorgeous. Now, he's an example of a breed that is susceptible to allergies, correct? Correct. Here's the thing about allergies. With humans, what happens, in, and the spring is the time when humans and pets get allergies. Uh, humans get red eyes, they get runny noses, they sneeze a lot, but that's not the same kind of symptoms you see in pets. For them, they face rub. You'll see them rubbing their face along the carpet or along the couch. Uh, they scratch or they'll lick obsessively at a paw. Those are the signs of allergies, the seasonal allergies in pets. But how common is it? Is it totally normal? It's very normal, especially in certain breeds, but mm -hmm. you'll see it in certain times of the year. So spring, of course, is the worst time. Same thing, it's ragweed pollen, it's moles. Um, there, you know, there's other kinds of things that trigger these allergies. Uh, it's especially common in dogs, not as common in cats, and then far less common. I was going to ask you about that. So, so what about you know, all the other possible pets you might have, rabbits, cats? Uh, by far and away, 90% dogs, another 8% hey, another cats, and another 2%. There was a recent study in one of our veterinary journals about a horse that was allergic to grass. Oh my goodness. And so they actually had to put like a bodysuit on this horse and then feed it certain kinds of foods. So it is in other species. Right. And what, which are the breeds in dogs that are particularly susceptible? Well, you, you see, uh, if you have uh, golden retrievers, Labrador retrievers, pugs, Sharpays, Irish setters, uh, cocker spaniels, miniature schnauzers, actually the purebred dogs have a lot more problems than the, the mixed breed dogs, what I call canine cocktails. Why is that? Uh, it's just because they have certain certain disease characteristics that are bred from line to line, and once you go to a hybrid or a crossbred, you breed a lot of these uh, problems out, out of them. Yeah. yeah, That's what they say, the, the, the mutts tend to just be healthier in general, yeah. right? So does Louie here have allergies, or is he one of the lucky golden retrievers that doesn't? Well, he's lucky he doesn't have allergies. And, you know, there's certain things you can do. Uh, you know, he's one of the breeds, of course, sheds a lot, too. So, right. you know, uh, we actually had used a product in called Furminator, because one of the things about uh, uh, aller people's allergies to pets is it's in the dander that's on the pet. So it's dried saliva, sebaceous gland secretions, and it carries the hair carries the dander, so the hair so, doesn't actually cause human allergies. So can pets be allergic to themselves? Be uh, allergic actually, to their own some dander? Some pets are actually allergic to the human owners. So they're actually uh, allergic to the skin from the humans. But I'll tell you some of the things that you do for them if they suffer from it. If they're suffering from allergies, and again, you're going to see them face rubbing, you're going to see them scratching, you're going to see them looking at paws. Uh, you can use uh, frequent baths for them, mm -hmm. and use colloidal oatmeal like Avena. You've heard the of that. The stuff that you use for humans. The same exact You're thing. Okay. Uh, just cool water baths, not warm water, because warm water kind of exacerbates that. Mm -hmm. There's these fatty acid supplements that do a lot of stuff to cool soothe the skin. Cool water baths. Cool water baths. Do dogs like that? Uh, not just not hot or warm. Okay. So you want it cool because it soothes if it's irritated skin. Okay. Uh, these colloidal oatmeal baths. Uh, sometimes we'll use uh, antihistamines, mm -hmm. so like uh, over-the-counter Benadryl if a pet's suffering from this time of year. You can, you can use yeah, that. Yeah, just call your veterinarian and ask for a dose for that. Okay. And then uh, other times we have to go to something a lot stronger. But also in the springtime... Like what? What would some, an example of something stronger than well, Benadryl? Well, uh, steroids, for example, okay. is what's used a lot. But you want to use those kind of... Uh, sparingly. Sparingly. Yeah. Uh, also, since this time of year, pollens are worse in the morning and evening, so keep your pets in during that time of day. And there's a great product called a Swiffer. I don't know if you ever use those. Those electrostatically yeah. charged pads that you use that collect pet hair and dust and stuff. I know stuff. exactly what the Swiffer is. So yep. we use them a lot to help prevent the dander from the pet from causing human allergies or just keep the house clean. But think of this pet as a Swiffer. And you want to keep your house clean because their hair, the pollen's not only, you know, the pollens that are in the environment on the floor, this thing acts as a Swiffer and it gets on their coat, so then they groom themselves and it exacerbates the allergies. So if you keep your home cleaner, have HEPA filters, use Swiffers, those kind of products, you actually reduce their allergies. Oh, that's, that's very good advice. And you said again, because obviously the dogs can't tell us when they're suffering, you said again the signs are a little different for the dogs. We have to watch out for them rubbing their eyes. Yeah, what they'll do, they'll face rub, they'll be licking a paw or scratching. Another thing you see this time of year is a condition called atopy. And atopy is actually an allergic dermatitis. So they inhale spores, mold, pol uh, mold spores, uh, ragweed pollen, and uh, it causes this explosive allergic reaction. And in fact, 80% of all ear problems that you see in dogs 
Uh, you know, and you see uh, ear problems in lots of breeds. 80% of them are caused by this allergic dermatitis. And a lot of the anal gland problems, you know, that see the pets that are scooting all the time on the floor yeah. or licking yeah. themselves back there, yeah. most of those are caused by this allergic dermatitis. So how common is this? Really common okay. and becoming more common. And there's, there's a great new solution for that. There's a drug called Atopica. So the condition is called Atopy, A-T-O-P-Y. The drug is called Atopica. And it's an oral cyclosporin like you use for chemotherapy. Is it prescription? You have to get it from your From vet? your veterinarian. Okay. My mother-in-law uh, is a little hard-headed at times. She's 83 years old, uh, and she has a little dog named Shingai. Three different times she's gone off the Atopica, and I've been gone on a trip or something. She's regretted it every time. And, and she goes, he was just doing so good. I took him off of it, and then he gets these explosive ear problems. So he gets the pussy ears, the fungal infections in the ears, the red raw ears. And uh, so we put it back on the Atopica, the problem went away. Dr. Becker, thank you so much. It's all, all great advice for our furry friends, man's best friend. And if you'd like to know more about allergies, human and non-human, be sure to check out the On Call Plus Allergy Center on the health page at abcnews.com.